In this video, I will show you guys how to find a formula for the special integrating factor as a function of x times y. And we will write that to be mu of x times y. And we will do this for this almost exact differential equation. However, before I talk about all these steps right here, let me emphasize what this means, mu of x times y. Okay, so let's go back to the good old function notation. Right here, let me just give you guys an example, mu, and we know the inside here, well, that's the independent variable, and let me just choose a letter, let me say t. This right here is mu as a function of t. And on the right hand side, I can just write an expression in terms of t, and that will be a function altogether, right? So let me just write this as 3t squared minus sine of t, just for example. And now this right here will be a function in terms of t. Well, in this situation, when we have mu of x times y, like this, notice that it has no comma, right? This means x times y, they must be together as one input. Once again, x to the first power and y to the first power, they must be together as one input. And like this, we see we have m of x comma y, and likewise this is n of x comma y. In this kind of situation, m and n, they are functions of x and y. And you can just use however many x that you want, and maybe some y together. I don't know, x and y just mixed together and things like that. However, in this form, the x to the first power and the y to the first power, they must be together, okay, when you multiply them like this. This right here is just one input, and I will show you guys a corresponding function. Mu of x, y, in this situation, it will be 3 times x, y, square, and then minus sine of x, y. And now, this right here will be a function in terms of the product of x times y. And you notice this is technically x squared, y squared, after you distribute the power, but you see, this is the first setup, okay? So, that's the idea. Keep in mind, x to the first power times y to the first power, they must be together as one input. Okay, let's get to work. Now, this is the form of the integrating factor, so we'll take this and multiply it through this almost exact differential equation, and we have this, and we want this equation now to be exact. That means I'm going to take this right here and do the partial derivative with respect to y. You see this was with dx already, so I take this and I do the partial of this whole thing with respect to y for the partial derivative. And likewise, we'll take this and we'll do the partial of that with respect to x. And we are going to set it equal to each other so that we can ensure that this right here would be exact. And now we have to do this carefully, because right here we have the mu. This is a function in terms of x times y. And m is a function in terms of x and y. It's a, it's a product. When we differentiate with respect to y, we still have to use the product rule, because mu contains y. Okay, product rule in action. We take the first function, we keep it, and we multiply by the derivative of the second. And let me just write this as the partial of m with respect to y, like this. And then we add it with the second function, and let me just put down as m. And we multiply by the derivative of the first. And I will just put down mu prime, and the input is x, y. And we multiply by x. And the reason we multiply by x is because the chain rule says so. Look at the inside. When we differentiate with respect to y, x is the constant. So mu of x, y, the first derivative will just be you know, mu prime of x, y, and then be sure you do the chain rule, and you see we have to uh, times the derivative x, y. The derivative x, y in the y world is just x. And let me just give you guys a quick example right here, okay? And for example, if I want to differentiate f of 2x, okay? Let me just say that this. Differentiating this, we will first get f prime, and then the input is 2x, it stays the same, right? And then you see, we have to do the chain rule. The derivative 2x is a 2, so we multiply by 2. Same thing here. We are doing it with respect to y. x is the constant, just like this 2 right here, and that's why we multiply by this x here. And 
And now, uh, we are done for the left-hand side. And for the right-hand side, same thing. Do the partial with respect to x, and this is the product. Product rule in action. We keep the first function, and we multiply by the derivative second. It will be partial n with respect to x. And then we add it with the second function, which is n. And we multiply by the derivative of the first. It will be mu prime of the input, which is x, y. And once again, the chain rule says, we have to look at the inside and take the derivative of this. The derivative of x, y in the x world, it will be just the y because y is the constant, right? So this right here is what we have. And now you see, this right here contains mu prime of x, y. Likewise, this right here contains mu prime of x, y. And this term right here contains mu of x, y. And this right here contains mu of x, y. What we want to do is, of course, collect all the derivatives together and collect all the original together. So this right here, I will just keep it on the left-hand side. And I'm going to factor this out. And I'll put it on the outside here at the end. Anyways, uh, m times x is positive. And let me just write this as x times m. And keep in mind, the m is the original right here. Well, this right here, I'm going to bring it to the left-hand side, right? And it will be negative. And let me put on the y first, and then the n. And I factored out the mu prime of x, y already. OK, right here, um, both of these terms have the original mu of x, y. Let me factor that out to be uh, the n right here. Let me put this down first. That's positive. So we have partial n with respect to x. And then once I bring this to the right-hand side, it will be minus and then partial m with respect to y, like that. OK? So the deal is that we want the derivative to be on the top, and then we want the original to be on the bottom. So I divide the mu of x, y on both sides. So we have this. And I will divide this to the other side, and we have that. And then in this case, you see, we have the derivative on the top, the original on the bottom. It contains derivative, right? So to cancel the derivative, we have to integrate. And in this case, once we integrate, you know you end up with ln function. That's great. And do it carefully, though. In this case, the idea, you know, it's the same from here. x times y is one input, OK? x times y is just like this t right here. You can also use some substitution if you would like. You can say x times y is t. And then if you just want to look at this instead of this kind of things, Go ahead and do so, but I'll just stick with x times y as one input. This right here is my input, and when I integrate the left hand side, I will have to do it with respect to x, y as that input. Okay? So, of course, I have to integrate both sides and with respect to the same thing. So, with respect to x, y, and this is what we have. And I put down parentheses around the x, y just to emphasize like this kind of situations. OK, when we integrate this, we get ln absolute value of mu of x, y. And this is equal to posing right here. And once again, don't worry about the plus c for the uh, integrating factor purpose. And that's what we have. Well, we have to get rid of the ln. So let's do e to this power and do e to that power so that they cancel. And technically, I should put on the absolute value. But you know, the absolute value is just going to give you two versions, the positive version and the negative versions, our goal is to figure out a formula for the integrating factor mu of x, y. So let me say, let me use the positive version mu of x, y. And you see, that's the formula right here already. e to this power, right? e to that power. And this is the formula that we are going to use. So perhaps I'll read it out loud for you guys. Mu of x, y is equal to e as the base, integral for the power, and integral of partial n with respect to x minus partial m with respect to y all over x times m minus y times n. And be sure this right here, you have to be sure that this right here depends on the product of x, y. So you have to make sure that x times y is the input and then we are going to figure this out. Hopefully, it only depends on x times y, just like this kind of situations. And then integrate that with respect to x times y. 
and this is the formula. And now let me show you guys an example for this. Really cool, huh?